We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Central bank digital currencies will control your life. Where you live, what you eat, where you travel, everything. I love nuclear. Uh, it does this radiation thing is tricky. When the to adopt that kind of course in the nuclear age would be evidence only of the bankruptcy of our policy or of a collective death wish for the world. This is the most urgent existential threat facing the American people in the world today. This is the Great Reset. Welcome back to SF Commons. We are delighted to bring you this segment, Build Back Better, You Own Nothing, Be Happy. We have a special guest, Tessa Lena, a world-renowned artist, performer, and writer. Tessa is a classically trained pianist and singer fronting the band called Tessa Makes Love. Tonight we will attempt to connect the dots. The world is in transition never seen before. Humanity is facing an existential threat. Build Back Better is part of the Great Reset. to be back and you are very kind thank you so much and then 2020 happened all those sci-fi initiatives that were transhumanists that were anti-human essentially but all of a sudden they started actually trying to implement that uh, welcome to tesla ai day 2022 should we bring up the bot you ready let's go, go. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens, because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Now, why is data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. Now, what do you need in order to hack a human being? You need two things. You need a lot of computing power, and you need a lot of data, especially biometric data. And the tech companies, they got everything that they were trying to get for years and a thousand times more as far as bringing kids to class online that they were trying to do forever they were trying to eliminate traditional education and make everything online so that it's surveilled and so that they prepare the physical world for being surveilled, surveilled as well people in the mainstream were laughing at the notion that there would be a vaccine passport of course now it's fully implemented and people were talking about digital ids of course today with the active rollout of CBDC in different countries, digital ID is becoming reality. The digital ID. Instead of carrying your normal ID or passport, you will soon have a digital ID that you will use for every aspect of life. To access healthcare and other vital services, to check into hotels and book international flights, you will use your digital ID to handle your taxes. Everything will be connected to your digital ID. All for your safety and convenience, of course. I mean, it only makes sense, right? Most of us have one email we use for our entire online lives. Why not have the equivalent of that for our physical lives? As Klaus Schwab said, quote, in the near future, similar monitoring systems will also be applied to the movement and tracking of people, end quote. From where you go to shop, to what you eat, to the trips you take, they will track your habits and behavior every second of the day. Well, Amarova was Biden's nominee, actually, and she uh, wrote a legal paper, a white paper, but very serious given her position. And she was proposing not only moving everybody's money to the Fed and essentially moving all the banking uh, to the Fed, but also in case
case of quote unquote emergency, the ability of the Fed to limit like what people can withdraw and what pe how people can use their money. And of course, it's sold as an emergency. But now I think in New York, we have three emergencies formally going. One for COVID, one for monkeypox, and one, one for polio. And they are kind of nonsensical emergencies because they're no emergencies. So at any point, they can say, oh, we have an emergency. And then here goes your money. It, Bank for International Settlements saying that that famous clip that I'm sure you've seen, where he says out of his own mouth that when people spend cash, then we cannot really see what, what they're doing with it. But if we have the digital currency, the CBDC, then we can easily track it and it can also be programmable. So at any point, they can say, okay, so you can't spend it further than five miles from your house. So you can't spend it on meat or you can't spend it on whatever. Your carbon footprint is too high. You cannot spend it at all. And there's also an initiative uh, called Economy by MasterCard and so it's completely official where they're saying, oh, we're going to give you credit cards that help the planet, that monitor your carbon footprint of your spending. And then if you your carbon of footprint is too high, we're going to turn it off. So the chairman of the Central Bank in Minnesota said it. Well, he said uh, that if I want to send money now to somebody, I can use Venmo. So he was actually criticizing this whole CBDC initiative. And he said, so I can use Venmo and send it now. So what is the actual benefit? And he said he has been asking this question. Nobody was able to answer with anything specific. The politicians and the corporate investors and the top, top, top financial people who are actually proposing things that are completely sci-fi, crazy, and clearly going to hurt the people. Federal Reserve Chairman Powell said that would mitigate the inflation. But then on the other hand, he, has, he says, well, we have to soften the labor market. And since he made that, statement, tax and hold, all of these major corporations are now laying people off. He is trying to balance the books on people's backs so that you will have incredible layoffs, unemployment, and at the same time, BlackRock, who is the biggest asset manager in the world, managing $10 trillion in assets, have bought residential properties overbid people who are just mom and pops trying to buy houses, and now suddenly you've got housing that are untouchable, that in San Francisco, one bedroom is like 3,600. Who can afford that? The land grab and the general asset grab, although I don't feel like the word asset because it's too soulless, but the asset grab, it's clear it's happening before our eyes, and it is not historically unprecedented either, because typically, theft on a large scale is accompanied by propaganda and very soft sounding rhetoric the bolsheviks did it they said land to the peasants factory to the workers of course they took everything from everybody in the end so here a lot of the reforms are happening well, here to to help the inflation i mean like why do we have inflation we have inflation because they printed a ton of money the world health organization as you said it, it is largely controlled by Bill Gates. One out of every 10 bucks that the WHO gets is from the world's second wealthiest man. So should we be concerned about how much one man has maybe an outsized influence with an obviously corruptible entity such as the WHO? Join from what I was told by Mary Odechan, who, who used to work uh, for the United Nations and who is a very brave human being. So she says that the World Health Organization is one of the few agencies under the UN that are not really accountable to anybody except their donors. That makes it a very easy uh, ground for crime of any sort, because if they're not formally accountable to anybody except their donors, it would take very honest don donors to keep them accountable. Well, here's an interesting tie. So Bill Gates, for the longest of times, wanted to have the World Health Organization declare coronavirus a pandemic. And the World Health Organization did not want to do that. So a day after Bill Gates, through his foundation, announced an infusion of $50 million into something called the Therapeutic Accelerator to help fight coronavirus and find a vaccine, much of that money to go toward the World Health Organization. One day after the, that announcement, the World Health Organization Secretary General came out and declared mm -hmm. coronavirus a pandemic. I don't know if your audience is familiar with the wonderful documentary from several years ago. It's called Trust Who? What I have found out is shocking and far exceeds my initial suspicions. What is worrying is that a small group of companies have attempted to subvert 
the process by which WHO is run. That was a pre-pandemic documentary, and it was talking about the corruption in the World Health Organization in regards to, first, the tobacco industry. It was discovered in the tobacco documents that they had placed moles at WHO. They had people in there who would alert the tobacco industry to every move that WHO was planning. Then the nuclear industry, and interestingly, Bill Gates, in fact, said in one of his talks that nuclear is his favorite baby. I love nuclear. Uh, it does this radiation thing is tricky, but uh, uh, they're uh, good, good solutions, you know. The World Health Organization has been suppressing the dangers of the nuclear accidents for quite a while. And that documentary, Trust Who, it documented that particular type of corruption in great detail. And I suspect that they were pressured by the nuclear industry, but I don't know for sure. How big is the influence of the nuclear industry? Планируем возвести в Индии 12 атомных энергоблоков с использованием российских технологий. Here at home, nuclear power is also an important part of our own energy future. Uh, as you know, I'm a big believer in nuclear power. The WHO is concerned with health. These are different priorities, but the two organizations are working closely together. You recently said that this is the first time since the Cuban Missile Crisis that there's a legitimate possibility of someone using a nuclear weapon, which could you lead to Armageddon. That's the word you used. It's irresponsible for him to talk about it. The idea that a world leader of one of the largest nuclear powers in the world says he may use a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine. And the whole point I was making was it could lead to just a horrible outcome. And uh, not because anybody intends to turn it into a world war or anything, but it just once you use a nuclear weapon, the mistakes that can be made, the miscalculations, who knows what would happen. Just how seriously is the United States taking the threat of the possible deployment of nuclear or biological weapons by Russia? Take a look at this. On its official government website, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has announced the purchase of anti-radiation drugs to the tune of more than $290 million. Marnie, that anti-radiation drug is being manufactured right here in the United States at a California-based pharmaceutical company. And one of the main reasons why I left this Democratic Party of today is because they have become the party of war hawks. We are literally sitting on the precipice of nuclear disaster. You hear these young men saying nothing else matters if we are all destroyed in a nuclear war that President Biden and the Democratic leaders in Congress have led us into, and they are completely failing in their responsibility, the president's foremost responsibility, to keep us safe to keep us free. Yes, if you'll remember that $40 billion funding package that went to Ukraine, the very big one in the beginning, there have obviously been many since, but in that one, there was not a single Democrat in the House or the Senate that voted against it. Not a single one. I believe there was a total of 66 Republicans in the House and the Senate. No Democrats. They have been absolutely silent. So these people are right. Where are the, the so-called progressives? Where are the, you know, the peace champions, the AOCs, the Bernies, all the people who claim to be representing this movement? They are absolutely silent, and they are the ones leading us into a nuclear war. Everything is a lie and everything is classified. But in mid-March, we got reports that from the Turkish mediators that Russia and Ukraine were close to an agreement. And both the Ukrainian and the Russian negotiators confirmed that. And they exchanged papers. And then you hear from the U.S., ah, we don't think these are going anywhere. Right. These negotiations aren't going anywhere. And then Biden flew to... Brussels to meet with the other NATO leaders, and he said this is going to be a long war. He didn't say this is promising news. He said this is going to be a long war. Then he went to Warsaw, and he said that man cannot stay in power. Yeah. And then Lloyd Austin said uh, we're weakening Russia. You see it has all of the hallmarks of us torpedoing the negotiations. A major problem that the media does not want to talk about is mental health. Since 2020, you've got increased cases of suicides, of a lot of violence, domestic violence, uh, road rages. You know, people are isolated. If you want, if you talk about abusing somebody, you isolate them. You lock them down. You, you lock them down in their homes. You lock them out of their jobs. 
you, you put them in a room where they just stare at a TV monitor or their phones, and so you got their, you got their minds. It's a breakdown of the human spirit and abuse. It's heartbreaking. In fact, there's a classical, now unclassified CIA torture manual uh, that is a very fascinating read and very helpful at this time because it specifically talks about psychological breakdown. One of the things that it talks about is that, first of all, unpredictability is very important to psychological breakdown because if somebody is tortured in a consistent manner, people adopt to even the most horrible things and they kind of tune out and then they are much harder to manipulate. But if it's random, if it's, you know, like good guy, bad guy, today there's some hope, tomorrow there's total lack of hope, and unpredictable schedule, unpredictable everything, then people people's spirit gets broken down. And then maybe they are more inclined to bond with a proverbial, you know, good cop. And it's cynical, cynical, cynical. And that very technique was applied not to some criminal, it was applied to the entire population, especially the Western world. Because There's a reason why Winston Churchill once said, never let a good crisis go to waste. It's because when there's a crisis, when the masses are suffering, they beg for a savior, they beg for a solution. And they'll listen to just about anyone who has the guts to stand on a podium and point out who the evil bad guy is, while offering a convenient solution. In this case, it would be restructuring democracy as we know it. This is what you need. The perfect crisis to give the world a little reset. Here is an effort to, to flaunt the destruction of the rule of law. When you have a deep state involved in violating the rights, raiding political opponents and journalists, I thought that just happened in Banana Republic. But now it's just being normalized. You have the DOJ, Department of Justice, the FBI, the CIA, funded by the taxpayers in the government, flaunting violations of the Constitution, and it's supposed to be normalized because they hate the person? And they are destroying the law and order. They are trying to make Constitution essentially uncool. Bringing in robotics. If you had to create a different legal system to manage your robots, it would take many decades longer to implement robotics. But if you can change the definitions of human and how you manage the humans to integrate robotics into the same labor force and you have one legal system for both, point. Yeah, you save, uh, Allison, I can't describe to you how much money you can save in the speed at which you can operate. And I think a lot of the crazy transgender, you know, things like uh, the different, you know, complex sexes and what by desexing the humans you can integrate the robots and go much faster as a legal matter they had this cop 26 in glasgow where they talk about a 150 trillion dollar transformation of the global economy i want to take you back to the uh, harper's magazine article it was published in 2008 it was called the next bubble and it was talking about the green bubble and so the article and Corey morningstar was the one who originally dug it out. So the article was talking about the need for the next bubble because or else everything just explodes. Here, here we go, like the green economy. The green economy, green and sustainable, and which is not green and sustainable at all, that was a very good candidate. All of it is essentially just a gambling scam. It is just yet another way of taking from the poor, already poor, and channeling it to the ones who are already rich. The, the industry is polluting horribly, it's poisoning us horribly. But they're not talking about geoengineering. Geoengineering has been poisoning our skies, our soil, our water, and our food for everything. There's a NASA document on the NASA website, so it's not even conspiratorial remotely, from 1966. And it says that, oh, for the past 20 years, we've been doing weather modification experiments, and we plan to have it on a large scale by 1972. That's what the document said. So by 1972, they plan to have it on a large scale. It's yet another pyramid scheme to steal and in combination with all the financial aspects and the CBDC and so the financial model would look something like that. So, but in the ideal world, so if we have central digital currency and digital wallet and everybody are, is on universal basic income and so the people who deviate from the party line have their income turned off 
And so the diet can be controlled, their location can be controlled. I mean, now there's a plan. The Biden administration wants to increase taxes on Medicare and Social Security. Senator, we have a deficit. We have Social Security and Medicare looming. Would you consider looking at those programs, age of eligibility, absolutely. cost of living, put it all on the table? The answer is absolutely. You have to. I mean, you know, it's the, one of the things that my, you know, the, the political advisors say to me is, whoa, don't touch that third. Look, the American people aren't stupid. It's a real simple proposition. Social Security is not the hard one to solve. Medicare, that is the gorilla in the room. And you've got to put all of it on the table. Everything. Everything. You've got to. And I've been seeing a lot of old men, women, whatever race, homeless. Well, the, the crime against the old people has been happening in the broad daylight. Even with just the pandemic and locking old elders in the nursing homes, and then so many casualties happened in nursing homes from, I mean, the Cuomo in, in New York, as everybody knows, he actually issued a rule that nursing homes had to take coronavirus patients. And how, I mean, he's not stupid. He's corrupt, but he's not stupid. So the only reason there's any scarcity is because it's an artificially created scarcity. And there's so much richness, this planet of opposites. All over the world, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in different countries, farmers are actually fighting because the government are mandating for them to not farm. Bill Gates himself is the largest farm owner in the U.S. And he, they're killing cattle, food processing plants are burning accidentally, and they're talking about the health values of eating bugs. Oh, don't get me started on that. There's a very clear, physically coordinated effort to destroy agriculture as we know it, and all natural foods, and move us toward the system where the same three and a half wealthy investors are selling us food and medicine and water and probably air soon enough because if they if they sequest carbon then they will also figure out how to take oxygen out of the air the entire effort is to remove any possibility from the people to benefit from the natural world so that we have to buy from them so that we have to buy low quality food and products from them they are trying to destroy farming on purpose, they're trying to destroy all natural foods. And even early, you know, when the this whole COVID thing started, early 2020, it was visible. They were blocking the farmers from farming because they were saying, oh, it's a health hazard. You know, somebody tested positive or somebody may test positive, so you have to be on lockdown. So the farmers, early 2020, they were forced to throw out, you know, like potatoes and onions. So as, as the pandemic was going on. So the World Economic Forum is talking about year 2030. Yeah. What can we do? I think it's a very, well, that's a very loaded question and a very important one. We human beings need to wake up to the fact that it's not cool to abuse anybody, to take freedom away from anybody. When we realize on the deep, deep emotional, spiritual level that taking away dignity and stomping in our dignity is unacceptable, it's going to reverse the course of events. They're trying to divide us. They put this against the other, the left versus the right, the Democrats versus the Republican, you know, the Russian versus America. I mean, they're, they're, only, they're dividing people on purpose. As long as people are divided, they are likely going to win. So I think the critical thing to do is to remember that we, common people, truly are in this together in many ways, being educated and trying to understand the big picture is critical. There are many brave people in the freedom community, such as yourself, who are trying to use their expertise towards fighting against the great reset. And there are farmers and lawyers and activists and writers and artists and doctors, all very brave people going against the, bra uh, going against the grain. And doing that is critical. But I think that in addition to all the things that each of us can do in our own environment, using our own strength and our own skills and expertise, it's really important to awaken our spirits and our hearts. We must conduct our affairs in such a way that it becomes in the communist interest to agree on a genuine peace. And above all, while defending our own vital interests, nuclear powers 
must avert those confrontations which bring an adversary to a choice of either a humiliating retreat or a nuclear war. To adopt that kind of course in the nuclear age would be evidence only of the bankruptcy of our policy or of a collective death wish for the world. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us again. This is Myrna Lim with SF Commons. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night.